Welcome back. I'm gonna be probably doing some, uh, a couple features, but then also touching up some of the looks here on our game, because I was just thinking how we're actually kind of in the home stretch of programming the hardest thing. Um, and then once, basically once we are done programming this hardest thing, which is just moving our stones and our stacks with the correct stack order render, um, once we're done with that, we just have to worry about um, basically a win state, how to detect that, and then uh, counting score and everything, which is going to be way easy compared to the rest of the stuff. So I'm wanting to add a new font to our title here. So uh, I'm going to give us a different font here. Let's see. I was liking this SPQR font for, for the main tack. Um, so we'll just go ahead and download this. So the SPQR, TTF, that's what we need. Um, I'll go ahead and copy this, put it in our tech repo under fonts. So now we've got SPQR, TTF. So we'll just change I guess we'll just change this pixel font to title font and we'll give it SPQR instead, TTF. And then let's go ahead and do this small font as, let's do, um, I was wanting to do a monospace font for the debugging. So we can go ahead and do um, this font I found. Let's go here, zip. got this was the mono yeah the mono here so we'll just take the mono here um is this is bold oblique oh okay yeah i like the mono we'll put the mono in there as well deja vu sans mono and this small font will become this Deja Vu Sans Mono. And then we just need to find any time we mention font, make sure we're using the correct font. Just like this, set font here to title font. And set font small pixel font, that's instead just small font. Instead of small pixel font, small, small font. Okay. And then I don't think we set, I don't think we set fonts anywhere else in our play state. Oh, I guess we do. Um, pixel font will become title font. Camel case, title font. Small pixel font, it's just pixel font, or small font. Um, it looks like those are the only two mentions in the play state. And I don't think we do it, we don't mention it in our other classes either. Okay, 
So let's see if our new fonts are working. Nice. Okay, we'll just um, shrink our small font to be even smaller. Um, yeah, we'll shrink our small font to be maybe half that size. bigger. Then we can change the offset a bit. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, maybe let's curious how how well the SPQR font will look um, scaled down. So what if we take the SPQR font as our small font and see what that looks like. <laughs> the Roman numerals are going to kill me. Yeah, that's funny. It, it looks okay scaled though. Um, I just don't want to deal with those Roman numerals. I'm not such a fan of this deja vu font, actually. Um, but it'll be okay. Mono space is like not a super interesting style of typeface, but it works. So. Let us let us make our render thing adapt better. Um, also, maybe want to do. Mm, I was thinking about adding a drop shadow so you could read stuff better, but it's probably not that great idea. Um, if we look at our debugging here. We print out. Um, we've all we start at this 220, and then we increase by 50 every time. We can kind of automate this, so we don't have to do the math every time. We can just multiply. Um, that's looking okay. Where is move type place versus the other one? Yeah, so let's say move type place needs to be not so to the left, so it's more center of attack. This is all just, this is totally unnecessary. I'm just trying to make it look nicer for my sake. Maybe move it to the right by like 20 pixels. So let's do minus 380 here instead. We'll see if that's more centered, and then we'll worry about the offset. Yeah, that's looking better. And we'll offset these to be a little lower than they currently are, and then a little lower than a 50 pixel buffer. So let's open our constants. We'll give us um, some new values, which will be like... Uh, Debug Y. Which will be that, um, what was it, 220? Our debug Y started at 220, so we'll do 240 to give it a little bit of space. So 240 is where we start, and then debug 
my offset is going to be 40 pixels instead of 50. And then we just offset it by the debug times the amount of whatever line of code it is. So we'll, we don't have to do that math in our head anymore. We can just say, hey, this is not at 220, it's at debug Y. I already had a debug Y increment. Is that true? That's exactly what I'm doing. I did have a debug Y increment already that I didn't use anywhere. So look at I already did this. I already gave us this, but I didn't do anything with them. That's kind of funny. So I was wanting to do this. Um, I just forgot to implement it after I half implemented it. But yeah, we'll get debug Y. Then we'll... Second line of code is debug Y plus debug Y offset. Is that what it is? Debug Y offset. Yeah, debug Y offset. Debug Y offset. So look, we'll do like a times one here. I mean, we, well, it'll be times two and beyond for this, but this is the new code for each one. So instead of knowing which number we want, we just kind of pick which row we want each one to be in. This will be one, this will be row two, this will be row three, and row four. And then we can Take a look. Nice. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Um, I'm wondering if I can put our music back on, but it's loot music from YouTube I ripped, so I don't want to get copyright stricken for having someone else's music, which is why we're listening to music I coded right now with Sonic Pi. Um, so yeah, we won't, we won't add his music, even though it's really good. Curious what this font is. This font is really good. I like this font. How do we see what font we're using in our um, Sublime? Front face. Where is that? Is it in settings? This is settings. Front face. There's a default font face, which is what? How are you able to see what font it is? Sorry, this is a very slow start to this episode, but just trying to get some uh, aesthetically um, pleasing changes made. So, you know, the prettier it looks, the more likely I am to continue <laughs> working on it. Not that I'm about to quit. It's just that it helps kind of break up the monotony of scratching my head. even do that. 
Where's the console? I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Here, preferences font. No? Would think it would show up. is the default sublime font. It's just monospace 10. Let's use that instead of deja vu. Monospace 10. Space ten font. just be called Auto Space 10. See, look, this is like even the one I've got. It doesn't look like this, though. Not that it matters, I'm just being picky here. Whatever, I'll find it later. I don't have to do this on stream. Um, so let's take a look here. I want to, we've got to do a handful of things. So it's like, we've got to make sure we can move a whole stack and say, yes, I want to move the whole stack. And then I would say, yes, I want to move it here. And I want to move every single stone here. Now, if I hit enter, what should happen is um, we should stop rendering these um, movement highlights or movement locked highlights, and then we should switch players. So if, if, if enter is pressed and we have no um, occupants in our mouse stones, we need to switch the player over so that we can continue the game and then stop rendering those things. Now there's a bunch of things. There's a bunch of variables we change once we initiate a move type move. Um, so we'll probably need to write a function to clear or to reset all of those functions back to their init settings. So it shouldn't be shouldn't be difficult. Um, we just have to kind of meticulously go through and see which things all need to be erased. Because if things don't get erased properly, uh, we'll have bugs in the future upon a stone pickup in that in that stack in the future, or moving onto that stone in the future, or who knows what. So I think we're going to work on that first, um, because that's a bug before it's even, um, before our render order is even jacked up. So we need to find where we lock in our um, here's the logic for our first stones drop in our moving origin. Here is here is where we click to lock in our first movement grid. 
here's where we drop stones in our second movement, or our, actually our first movement grid. So here. So I'm guessing we need this stack control that'll modify the occupants, I'll modify this space's occupant with proper stack control, so that's good. And we need to do that upon locking that square in, but we need to say um, if occupants in that grid, no, if occupants in our mouse stones, mouse stones occupants, is equal to zero at that time when we press um, enter. That means we've dropped all of our stones. Oh. Uh, which means we would then swap the player. Um, Okay, so just like how last episode we did a ternary operator to swap the uh, um, what did I call it? DOM? DMO? Just like we did the ternary operator to swap the DMO value last episode, we might want to consider doing something very similar with our player logic. Um, right now, our player is set to an integer, so player 1 is player 1, player 2 is player 2. Actually, no, we can do, yeah, we can use the ternary operator here. We just have to know what we're doing. So here, we can say player gets assigned a value that is a condition, or an expression rather, and we're saying, hey, if player's equal to one, and one or two, no, and two or one. So what this will do is, if we're player one, we're saying, um, since player is equal to 1, we're setting it equal to 2. And then we're moving 2 into our updating our value to swapping it. And if we're player 2, then player 2 does not equal 1, then we're actually setting it equal to 1 and assigning that into our player. So it should swap players once we hit enter with 0 mouse occupants when we press enter. <laughs> when we are in our uh, first movement grid locked. And we've dropped a stone, because that's what this is dropped in. We have to at least drop one stone in order to lock in that move. So let's see if, uh, I don't think it'll fix the render problem, but it should render a new stone and it should turn to black's move. So we move this here we drop all the stones, we hit enter, and it's black's move now. But it's in a move type move, so we need to switch our move type move. What the heck happened there? Oh no. We're still able to drop and pick up stones. Um, because I think we're doing this. Oh god. Well, we would need to flush everything. We'd need to flush everything in that reset thing I, I mentioned. So we'll have to go through and make sure we reset everything because we'll have to say, um, if we swap the player, we need to also swap the move type back to place, back to its default. So move type will get the place move type. And then we'll have to also add all of our all of our resets. 
Um, let me see. Move type is a string. Move type is a string. Cool. So when I say add all resets, we need to make a list of how many resets we need, right? Which type, right? So here, I've got a notes got a notes file. We can put the resets in here as we keep track of them. So let's go through our move type move logic and keep track of everything that needs to be reset upon a player turn being reset or changed. Um, the mouse stone should be set appropriately. I don't think we would need to do anything else to that mouse stone. <sighs> Although... You know, we have a yeah, bottom stone index for our mouse stone. Okay. No. It should... Mouse, I'm thinking mouse stone's okay. We just need to reset all the grid occupants fields. Like the rendering the color and the movement locked and all of that good stuff. So upon a move type move, here. So yeah, we want to wipe all legal moves for all of our grids once we switch players because we're going to be populating that based on whose player is active and we're switching who's active. So we'd want to reset that. Just put resets here. Now we want to reset movement origin row and column because there's no longer a movement origin space because we're swapped. So we got to reset that. And we'll have to see what we initialize these as so that we can initialize them correctly. Uh, it's just zero. Move locked row, move locked column, zero. Um, movement origin row. Let me see that. Movement, origin row, movement, origin column, zero. So, pop in a zero for our resets, and we'll need, oh, we need to keep on digging. So, move type move, legal move, occupants should be right, movement origin locked, we would need to flush. Occupants should be fine. Occupied shouldn't be touched. Movement origin locked, which you already have. Move locked highlight. Uh, we need to flush that. Now move locked row. Do we have those two? We have movement origin, not move locked row. And I believe these were both zero also. Uninitialization. I believe this is false. Uninitialization. Movement origin locked. It's probably false upon initialization. We'll double check though. Um, legal move, yeah, we would need to flush all legal moves if a uh, player changes. So, legal move gets flushed to false. Legal move, occupant should be okay, movement origin locked. 
lowest milestone stack order. Yeah, we need to flush lowest milestone stack order with whatever we initialize it as. In row, we've already got that. Move locked highlight. Do we have move locked highlight? Move locked highlight, yep. They can move. Okay. We need to flush stones and hand locked. We don't need this DMO anymore. Dropped in movement origin, we need um, flushed. See, so we need to write a function that flushes all these to the proper init value so that we can swap them before we change players. Got lowest milestone stack order, yeah. Should all be okay. Dropped in movement origin, stones and hand locked. We've got those, right? Dropped in movement origin, stones and hand locked. We should be okay there. Um, do we have first movement grid locked? No, we do not. flush that. Move locked row, move locked column. We've already got that, yeah. Move locked row, move locked column, yeah. Um, we already flushed legal moves. We already have a falsify all occupants legal moves, so we won't have to actually add that. So for any legal move, we can just incorporate into our new function running this function that we already wrote, so do I have to do it twice? Now we do need to flush uh, these directions, so yeah, we would need to flush, flush all these directions. Dropped in first movement. So we need to flush that. Basically, we need to flush any and all values that get assigned or changed in a move type move. Because we will only want it to apply to that very turn, you know, then we then we reset it. Dropped in first movement. 
Okay. Okay. First movement stones dropped. Set it all. Where are we doing our render for the dark green upon the selection of our first movement grid locked? Here, move locked highlight. So, move locked highlight is what we need to flush in order to stop rendering those highlights. Uh, so, move locked highlight is right here. Okay, so let's just double check. Um, we don't need the legal moves because we have a function for that. So, in our reset all function, we should do our reset. Um, legal moves function. So like reset legal moves. Just put that to indicate that we already have that function. Um, then we have to be careful whenever we add more move types logic in the future to add those variables um, into this function. Which I'm thinking will actually define the function outside the init of our play state. And we'll just call that function in our init, and then we just put our we just put our variables initialized inside of that function, so we only have them in one spot. So let me check lowest milestone stack order. Lowest milestone stack order gets one. Stones in hand locked. That'll be a false. Right. Stones in hand locked. False. Dropped in movement origin is a number that starts at zero, I'm pretty sure. So dropped in movement origin. Dropped in movement origin, zero. First movement grid locked. That'll be a boolean. First movement grid locked. First movement grid locked. It's false. And then we have dropped in first movement, which should be zero. Dropped in first movement, zero. And then dropped in movement origin, zero. Our first movement stones dropped will be a boolean. First movement stones dropped. Yeah, okay. So these are all the values we need to reset with our reset all function before we change a player. So let's go ahead and write that function. Just like we've got reset board up here. And we'll put in a new function. And we will call it uh, reset. Or I'll call it player swap reset. Player swap grid reset. Okay. Takes in nothing because what we're using is global variables in our play state. So we're using the same variables for both players. We just keep track of them depending on whose player turn it is. Um, so the first thing we want to do is actually run this other function, which will um, make all legal moves false, then we can put in. Oh, but you know what? We've got to we've got to flush all the move locked highlights too. I'm kind of wondering if we just put this 
in into our falsified legal moves. Yeah, we can't do that. We can't do that. We gotta do it separate. So we'll have to do a fanciness for loop here. I say fancy by meaning not fancy at all. Um, but we will just reset all our grids. Move locked highlight to be false. So we no longer render that dark green when we hit enter if we've dropped all our stones. So we can get rid of move locked highlight and then we need all the booleans. Uh, we reset our legal moves. So we need... Let's just do these values, all these integer values. Okay, those two are taken care of. These two. Why does it do that to me? Uh, I, mean, I wanna put them in the order that they're used. So it's like once the Movement origin is locked. Um, these are kind of different. I'll actually put these above. So movement origin locked. Then we need, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just kind of for readability, I wanted to kind of group them. So dropped in movement grid. Then we would lock in our stones in hand, and once those are locked in, we would need the movement origin. Okay, lowest stone mouth, lowest mouse stone stack order can go up here with our move locks. First movement grid locked. So let's do these. Then this one. Well, first movement grid locked. Dropped in first movement. First movement stones dropped. It's fine. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. I just like it to be somewhat consistent. Easier to read that way. So now if we run this function, um, and I'll tell you what, we can actually, what we really would do is in our knit here, take out all of those values and just run this function. Just like how we do, actually. Um, we've already got this in a function, so we're already doing what I was thinking of doing, but it's like in our knit, we just run this reset board function so resetting the board function is basically our init. So if we put in, I think we can do a function in a function like that. I don't see why not. Let's just test them. Um, let's test our function first. And we'll worry about making it look prettier in the init. Okay, let's see. In our play state, where we put reset all. All resets. So look, we're gonna Probably 
actually. Put the player swap in the player swap function as well. Um, so in our function right here, first thing we'll do is actually swap a player. Okay. So let's see if uh, pressing enter now once we've dropped all our stones in the first movement grid will lock in our new player and reset those things because we've got the function running now. So let's give it a shot. So we're going to say pick up all three. Um, this is our spot. We're going to drop all three. Now when we hit enter, hopefully these black or these uh, dark green squares will stop to render. It'll become black smooth and it'll be a move type place and we'll have a black stone in our mouse. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. So check this out. Now move type move. Why don't we do... Oh, no. Oh, we have to lock in. Oh, this is awesome. Yes. 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 So we can move stacks now. For the first time, we can move stacks, um, which is really cool. And look, we can, if we want to lock in that, we want to drop two in here. So now this is where, this is the thing we need to fix next, right? See that render order, the the render, not the render order, the uh, the stack order render shrink is what I call it, because depending on our stack order. The higher our stack order, the smaller our piece gets, so that you can see it like a pyramid. So the stack order of one is our base stone, one stone laying flat. That's the biggest. It takes up, it takes up, um, you know, the whole border. No, no border. Uh, stack order of two has that thin outline, so it's shrunk by that much, and then stack order three is shrunk by that much. But see, like, so like. If we're moving a stack order of two, move it here. Um, it needs to adapt the stack order. Um, yeah. I have to go to the bathroom, but I'll be back and then we'll tackle some more stuff.
go. I do think the next order of operations is to get this stack order assignment upon dumping stones working. Um, it's just that the trickiest thing is that if we drop all the stones, they would change stack order depending on the the grid we're placing them in. Um, and then when we pick them back up again, they would need to inherit their old stack order. Wouldn't they? I mean, it's a choice. It's a choice. We can have them inherit their old stack order and then just get assigned based on which oh yeah it's tough yeah this has been the one thing i've been kind of avoiding oh. i'm gonna reset some of these streams here so that we can still keep going I'm curious, I should actually play this game and see how they do it differently, because I've actually never tried this online tack um, 3D one that someone made. Um, I just don't know anything about um, 3D yet, so sticking with the 2D. I've got enough problems with 2D, let me tell you. Okay. So, this is really tricky because we're using the stack order to, no, 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 we're using them. Let's see what we're doing with our stack order. We have a lowest milestone stack order. See, now I'm thinking we did this all wrong. So stack order is a field in our members. Now a member is just a information about a stone populant. So it's stone color, stone type, it's X and Y, and it's stack order. And the stack order defines how it renders and shrinks. So if the stack order is messed up, uh, the render will be messed up. Let's see what we do with stack order elsewhere, though. Uh, basically, we're moving we're copying stack order so it keeps the same size. Now that's not exactly the case. So instead of just mindlessly copying over the stack order from our mouse stone member, or from, um, this would be picking up stones. Uh, no, it isn't. Let me get you an example here. So. When we put down a stone, we're putting a stone stack order from our mouse stone, and we're directly copying it into the stack order of the movement grid, regardless of how many stones may be in there already, which is totally incorrect. Because we don't want to just copy the stack order based on that. So the question is, how do we drop something and change its stack order to be appropriate depending on the grid it's being placed in, yet when we pick it up, reverts back to its original stack order? So maybe we have a variable called original stack order, and we keep that as part of our member for as long as... Because the thing is that original stack order 
is probably going to change when you move stones. It probably is. Unless you're moving a whole stack or you're moving two stones that are sitting on top of one stone onto another stack of only one stone. Like those are cases where we would be using the original stack order still. But if we do it right, we should be able to assign those things uh, correctly, uh, regardless of their original value. So what do we do? I think we do. I think we should track the, I think upon picking up a stack, we need to lock in all of a field within all of those member stones. We need to lock in a field called original stack order and we assign it on that. And then when we're dropping stones, we need to assign the stack order based on one more than the occupant that is currently in um, it looks right actually but actually yeah that's kind of looking right I'm kind of conf used why lowest mouse stack order isn't a field within mouse stones at the moment. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wrote the code. I don't know. Um, let's see if we can move a stone directly on top of another stone and have it update its stack order because it, it's looking like that code is kind of saying that but I did not think we did that so lock in our stones we can move on this because it's not a, a standing stone or a capstone now when we drop a stone I'm thinking that it's broken and that it'll render a white stone completely over this black stone yes um, so that just basically erased that stone, that black stone that was there instead of stacking. So we do need to do something different. Um, maybe that's because this is just the first stones dropped. Um, and not the first or second stones dropped here. See, no, this is the same idea. Occupants our stack order will get we move our mouse stone stack order into the stack order into one stone above our current occupants okay so what we really need to do is do a stack I don't know what we need to do First of all, I'm going to give us a new field called uh, original stack order. Camel case. Original stack order is nil. Okay. So now we need to populate each member's original stack order with its original stack order upon picking up stones because we need to be able to we need to be able to turn a stone back into its original stack order so it could be on it, our mouse again in case you know if we drop five it should adaptively uh, shrink them and if we pick them up it should be where they are at original um, so that they're not changing size depending on whether you pick them up or uh, put them down or, and then have them change size like that so like we want to keep them mouse stones have one size it's locked in and then where you place them has one size that gets locked in depending on its current occupants if that makes sense so let's see
looking at this code, pretending I didn't write it, because it's so confusing. Um, We need to have better comments, I can tell you that much. So this is picking up stones. This is picking up stones in picking up less than picking up five or less stones. No. This is both picking up stones. Um, picking up stones from Boop and Arjun, right? Yeah. Then this is stones in handlocked. So we need to do it right here, where we say, um, we need to populate all of our, this is getting so hard, because the thing is, when you pick up, when you pick up a stack of stones, Depending on how many stones were in that stack, um, their stack order is their um, kind of index. Is that right? Let's see where we populate our stack order for the first time, I guess. See, we actually don't. We just assign it from our mouse stone. How is that real? I'm wanting to see our members and when we initialize them. stack order so I was thinking that stack order was the index um, what are our first two member parameters stone type and color we don't have an... This is confusing to me. So here we're populating... Um, um, uh, 10 members for every grid space. And then we're also populating 10 members for our... mouse stones object now those members don't have any assigned stack order because what's so confusing to me is if we yeah 
Yeah, I don't think we need to. I'm just trying to think of how we keep track of the member indexes, but I guess it's it's determined by how many occupants are in there. I used to think it was dependent on the stack order, but that doesn't make any... well... Yeah. Yeah, we don't want it. Okay. Yeah, we don't want it. We don't want our members' indexes to be tied to the stack order. We just want each member to have a stack order because uh, if we pick up five from a ten stack, we only want five members in our mouse stone. No, that's not right because we populate it with ten right off the bat. We just drop, gosh, it's so confusing, but yeah, we, we drop it based on its stack order. Don't we do that somewhere? I'm so confused. I thought we did, once we drop stones, so right here, we're dropping stones. And what we're doing with the stack order is taking Yeah, we're keeping track of the index. Okay, that's right. We're keeping track of the index with this lowest milestone stack order. Um, so that's how we're doing it. We're... We're only... So technically there are 10 members in mouse stones at all time. We're just only modifying the mouse stone at any given lowest mouse stone stack order at, at once. Um, okay. So... do this original stack order still. So what we're going to do is only upon picking them up and not upon dropping them, assigning these, these variables. So once we pick up five stones, how do we pick up five stones? Where are we doing that? doing it right here. Move all five occupants to mouse positions. So under this we would need to also assign this original stack order so we can revert the proper stack order if we accidentally drop it and then pick it up. And then we would need to do it here. Move top five members. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do it after we do all this, and we'll just say um, that Okay, what do we want to do? We want to get the stack order So look, we're assigning stack order of that grids. It's so crazy that I wrote this code and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Like I look at it and I'm like, why, why is this? So what we're doing is for each occupant, we increase our occupant. We take the member, we take each member, 
all of those values from that member, assign it into our mouse stone members stack order. So what I also want to do is, is put in our mouse stones um, original stack order here. So now when we modify stack order, we're not modifying our original stack order that uh, we can then. Okay, so we also need a field of original stack order in our members class. I mean, it, oh, it already is in our members class. So we just need to copy this over when we drop it as well. We need to copy over the original stack order. Um, so we're going to take the stack order of each member, put it in each member, you know, up to five stones, put it into our field of original stack order. We need to do that no matter what, no matter if we pick up less than five stones or to keep track of that because we need anytime we drop a stone we need to copy over the original stack order as well and every time we pick up a stone we need to copy over the original stack order as well okay let's go through So this would be dropping stones into our movement origin. I'm going to take... Oh, it's tricky. Let me just see. So we're dropping stones into our movement origin. So we're copying from our mouse stones all of these values but we need to add a value, which is our original stack order as well. We copy that into the appropriate grids um, original stack order field. modify when do they decouple because right now they're the same thing oh you know what yeah we don't no, okay, okay, they decouple, they'll decouple right here once I fix this, because the stack order is not going to become the same exact stack order from our mouse stones, that's not the case. So we'll leave a little note here. This is where they decouple. This is why we need to keep track of the original one, because we modify the stack order going into the, the, the movement origin space right here. So we need to say here... We need to adapt stack order because right now it's just the same. So let's go through, make sure we're copying all the original stack order so we don't accidentally overwrite those values because we need those values to render appropriate stone sizes for our mouse stones. So here we've got 
dropping stones in our movement origin, and we need picking up stones. Now, we need to pick up. When we pick up a stone, we need to pick up its original stack order. Right now, we're saying Yeah, we'll need to wipe the original stack order upon a player change too, I think. Yeah, because it needs to reset. I think. So we'll say here, original stack order. So here we're moving from our grid, from our selected grid, from our movement origin grid into our mouse stones. So we're trying to say, copy back this original stack order from that occupant that is in there. like take back that original stack order so that we know how to render it once we pick it up. Um, and then once again, the stack order, the actual stack order, oh shoot, this is crazy. Yeah, we need to change this because we'll take, it doesn't matter what the stack order it is coming out of um, coming out of the grid it doesn't matter what stack order it is it's going to change to whatever its original um, stack order is so we need to change the code for that gosh I have to go to the bathroom again um Trying to get a little bit more done here. I don't want to cut it too short. We're about to maybe figure something out. I'm curious, it should still run fine with those changes we've added. Yeah, it doesn't crash, okay. Um. So we've got movement origin grid, and then we'll need first movement grid, and then um, so here, upon dropping into a first movement grid, we need the same thing. We need to copy our mouse stones original stack order. into the grid's first movement. In the first movement grid's uh, original stack order. So that we can pick it back up to render in our mouse stones. So it's just a way of passing this information so that we can retrieve it when we need it, if we need it. Once again, we need to adapt this stack order. Uh, picking up a stone, same thing. Uh, it's that we need to take the stack, we need to take the original stack order and copy it into our mouse stones again. So this. original stack order gets assigned into our mouse stones original stack order so it's like we need to render I 
was going to say we need to render normal stones on the board at their real stack order and mouse stones at their original stack order, but that's not really the case. Uh, we just need to update our stack order based on either the grid or based on our original stack order, depending on whether or not we're dropping or picking stuff up. So it's a little, it's a little different than just if it's a mouse stone, do its old original stack order. It's just I'm trying to keep track of all this data and not get any bugs, so I'm kind of manually passing these things. I don't know, I'm learning. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never made anything like this before. But we've got picked up. We've got original stack order picked up from our original grid. Then we would just need to change this. That's currently our last place to do it at. Because we don't have anything past our first movement locked just yet. Okay, let's go back and instead update our stack order based on how many occupants are in there. So, anytime we wrote that adapt stack order, we want, so look, this is dropping stones in our origin locked space, movement origin locked space. So, uh, this one actually can stay the same because, actually, yeah, it depends on how many occupants, no. No, no. It'll keep its, it'll keep its original stack order here. Yeah, it will keep its original stack order here, so we wouldn't need to change the stack order. Because when you pick up a stone from your movement origin space, it's it's populating... It's actually just copying all the stack orders from that grid into your mouse stone, no? It would be under here. Right here. So we click, yeah, we click on the grid. It populates the stack order, the original stack order. Yes, so stack order for our mouse and for when we drop and pick up stones in this movement origin grid are the same because we're 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 if we pick up five from a 10 stack we'd be dropping uh our lowest stone index which is a stack order of six onto a stack of five which would re-update its stack order to six or whatever so um in a in a plus five stack that logic doesn't need to be we don't need to change anything to our stack order in this first grid. I believe that's the case. Yeah, I believe that's the case. I believe we don't need to adapt this stack order. And I believe we don't need to actually update our original stack order because They're the same? Well, let me think. So we were putting... No, we do need to keep track of it. We do need to keep track of it. Yeah, we need each member to keep... The original stack order isn't changing here. That's the thing.
Hmm. So yeah, if we press down, our first stones drop in our movement origin lock. Do we need to copy over our original stack order from our mouse stone members? Or not? say let's just do it let's just keep let's just copy it over um, I don't think it's optimal I'm just uh, I'm not sure what to do there so because we are actually nullifying the stack order of our mouse stone members I think we do need to pass it over well, we are not nullifying our... You know what? We don't need to do it. We don't need to do it here. Yeah, we don't need to update our original stack order because our original stack order is not changing. So, the member... The member that would be um, the member right here in our lowest milestone stack order upon dropping um, I, I really don't know I think we might need it <laughs> I'm so confused we'll see if we can take it out let's leave us a little note can we take this out Once we get other stuff working, we can test that. Okay, so in our movement origin grid, when we pick up stones and drop stones, the stack order will not change because they're only being placed on a stack that corresponds to the stack they're being placed on. There, that's highest index stack order is one beneath the lowest mouse stone stack order index. So I think that's the reason why we can just literally keep the same exact stack order, and that's the reason why dropping and picking up stones onto an empty grid renders perfectly fine as of right now. And it works for the movement origin grid as well. So, I'm going to keep the copy of the original stack order just in case that's responsible for something I'm not certain about yet, but the movement origin grid should be fine. It's just that when we drop a stone from our mouse stone into our new grid that we need to modify its stack order to be dependent on how many occupants are in said grid so we will when we place something yeah we need to not we're not trying to assign the old stack order into this grids stack order what we really want to do is assign however many occupants are in this grid. We want it to be um, we want it we want the stack order to be set to one higher than the top most occupant. Do we have Oh, it, it, 
we have a stack control that does that, but not a index, I guess. How would we do that? Okay, no, I get it. We would just say that the stack order for that grid becomes a number that is that grid's occupants plus one. That's what its stack order is, is going to be. Um, and then we actually copy the original stack order into that field of that member so that we can pull it out when we pick stones up, which is what we're doing right here. When we press up, we need our mouse stone members stack order to become the original stack order of that grid. So it would be here, it would become the original stack order. And then what we're doing is moving the original stack order from that grid back into our mouse stone, which I guess, yeah, we'd have to do, I guess. What are the odds you think that works, guys? Because we're doing, yeah, we're modifying the stack order upon picking a stone up in our first movement. We're changing the grid from where it came from. No, no, no. When we're, okay, when we're picking up a stone, we're changing our mouse stones stack order back to its original stack order. Yep. Okay. Let's see. So in order to test this, we would need um, a stone right next to our movement space. So um, we're able to drop stones in our movement grid still. We can lock that in and we'll get legal moves. We'll lock in a the first movement here and we can drop look at that it worked it dropped that's perfect it dropped a stone into a second stack index now if we pick this back up it should grow again and it does because see how it's exactly the same size here yet when we drop the stone in it shrinks and same thing here it's exactly the same size but we drop the stone and that stone shrinks. And we're able to drop all of them, and we're able to pick them up and have the same stack order. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, if we drop no stones and hit enter, it won't change players, which is right. And if we drop any amount of stones, no, if we drop all of our stones and we hit enter, then it becomes a new person's turn. That's sick. Okay. I mean, there's probably some bugs in there somewhere we'd have to dig around for, but I'm really happy that's working. For example, let's just move some... Let's just get a bunch of stones on here and let's just move some. So look, we're going to move it onto here. Drop it. And then it moved onto there. We're going to say, okay, you know what? I'm actually going to move on top of you. So, we're going to drop on top of you. That's sick. Now, we're going to say, oh yeah, well, I'm going to drop one stone here. And then actually move on top of you. That's sick. Okay. One thing we do not have at the moment is stones stacked so right now let's say well let's say uh, we wanted to move a black onto a black there's actually two stones there so we we need to come up with something to do that. Okay. 
that's really tough. Because what do we exactly do there? We could render a little border, a little border around each piece to signify that there's actually a slightly smaller black stone on this space that you can't really see. I think we can do that. I think we can render just a slight, oh, but then again, the slight border needs to scale with the stack order, so. I bet we could figure it out. Let's let's not do that today, but we can we can figure that out. Let's say we need to add slight border around stones to visualize stacks same color stacks because right now black on black can't read and if it's white on white can't read it either so we'll have to add that we got moving stacks though at least for a, a, a one movement um, a moving from the movement grid to the first movement stone we've got that locked in which is cool um it's really cool it's really cool that's that's a big part of the game oh let's test can we move on top of a capstone we move this it only picks up five. We drop how many we don't want to move. We lock it in, and then... Capstone's a legal move. Capstone's a legal move, everybody. We need to fix that. So... I thought we were doing that under falsifying legal moves. Which is saying, oh look, we've only got it. For a movement origin lock. No, if stones in hand is locked, then what am I doing here? This is going through every grid and asking if stone control is a capstone or a standing stone then then that legal move is false but we're actually oh no we're not doing legal moves true after that okay so how come stone control isn't getting set where do we set the stone control we only do it there we do it right here. No. Oh. So we've got a function called get stone control. Takes in an occupant and it returns, it actually modifies the occupant's stone control field to be equal to the stone type of said member's stone. So whenever we run this get stone control, which we're doing right here, that's actually updating all the stone control, then we're saying if that grid stone control is a capstone, it cannot be a legal move. What if we also say legal move highlight gets false there too. That might be redundant, but I'm going to see if it fixes. Is whether or not we can do that. So let's see. We've got capstone right here. Move type move. Let's lock it in. We're still saying that's a legal move. Yeah, that shouldn't be possible. I'm going to take out this DMO quick. 
We don't need it. This was just for testing purposes. But what we do need to do is change this to legal move or not. So the grid, uh, we want to populate this debug with the grid at our mouse Y, mouse X. We want that legal move to be populated there. So now let's see. Everything should be false because we haven't locked in our stones in hand. And we have now locked it in, and um, it's just clearly rendering capstones as a legal move. Um, so let's print up stone control and see if that is messing up. And if that isn't messing up, then maybe our function's just not working right. But I thought we tested it, so let's just see. Stack control gets the stack control of the grid occupant at our mouse's location. And we're trying to do our stack control uh, field, which is a string. Um, actually, yeah, we shouldn't be we shouldn't need to concatenate it because it should be a string but we would need to concatenate it with another string. Just like that. You don't need to convert it to a string because it should already be a string. <laughs> I don't know why that's crashing. instead of trying to do the math in my in my head now for that offset we just change the number to be one higher and now the debug will render not stacked on top um so yeah stack control seems to be working um yet uh, see look it knows it's a black stack control so it shouldn't be a legal move there see Stack controls black, yet it's a legal move. Um, actually, it's not that it's controlled by black, it's that it's a, it's a stone type. So if it's a stone type of a capstone, so we actually need stone type here. Stone type. Not stack type, stone type. This is stone type. Okay. Look at that. We're not updating our stone types. How are we not doing that? I think we need to do something just like we did with our stack control just for our stone types because it knows the stone type of the member in there otherwise it wouldn't be able to render it but it doesn't populate the occupant stone actually no that's why it's not rendering is because okay okay i think i know what's going on because the occupant doesn't have a stone type which it should, it should have a stone type, top stone type. Um, it should have a top stone type value. Because right now, we're, we're, we're falsifying the legal moves based on uh, 
we're falsifying oh it's stone control that's that's exactly top stone type that I'm talking about so get stone control capstone or standing stone I don't think we need this um yeah stone control let's pop let's let's print up that stone control be weird because that's our first oh really stone control is really not populating oh I'm calling it hold on I'm calling it get stack control no get stone control I do do it get stone control. So I need to run this get stone control on all the occupants in order to update it. So wherever we do our get stack control, I guess we would need to do this. Where do we run this get stack control? Okay. But then we don't run get stone control. We do. If our stone's in hand locked, we do it. Okay, so what if we don't do it? What if we don't do it only if stone's in hand locked? What if we do it for every field regardless? Then we'll use it and then it might work. Let's see if stone control is now populating. 6.30. Get stone control. Okay. Yeah. Um. What if we do this? update we run we run that get stone control we don't want to do this here we don't want to do this here yeah we don't want to do this here <laughs> what we do want to do is run this function anytime stone control would change now stone control would change upon a placement in a grid it would change upon locking in stones in hand it would change upon locking in first movement stones dropped and if we and if we only run that function on those three instances then we don't have to run it every single frame of our game slowing us down so what we were doing was we were doing this if our stones in hand was locked actually why didn't that work? Because stone control only matters if you're gonna move a stack on top of something. It's like, if your stones in hand are locked, you're about to move the, that stack of stones. Therefore, get stone control. And get stone control really just modifies the stone control 
of said occupant as a parameter modifies the field of stone control to be equal to the stone type. Yeah, and the stone type, we're, we're, we're checking if the stone type is a capstone or a standing stone, so this should stone control so let's see if once we lock in once we lock in our stones in hand if our stone control is now working okay so stones in hand uh, right now stone control actually stone controls working now Huh, it's working now. Now it's not allowing us to do that. What do we change? Did we change something that I missed? It's working. Let me see. Stone control does not populate for the tester grid or for these things. Um, but once we click it, it's back to not working again. It's back to not working again. How was it working? How did it work? How come our stone control was working just a second ago. See, look, see how our, our that's weird. Our stone controls actually populated on this one grid, but not any of the others. doesn't render those stone controls when our stones in hand are locked, which it was, it, it did on accident, I guess, but, so instead of doing this, I don't know why that doesn't work, but we will literally just run this function anytime a stone control would change. So upon a placement of a stone, this would change. So if we're placing, we're in a, yeah, if we're placing a stone, then we need to update the stone control of that grid, mouse Y grid, mouse X grid. Okay. So we update stone control upon a placement we should update stone control under a uh, dropping. Yeah, we drop it. We drop a stone. Uh, we update the stone control. We pick up a stone. We update stone control. Now, drop a stone in first movement grid, lock it in, pick it up, lock it in. So let's see if it's working now. Shouldn't work on grid 1-1 one, because one, we don't actually assign it, we don't actually place it, so I'm not surprised, but it's not working here. Why is that not working? We placed it. The occupant's stone control should be set. This is an occupant. What? 
is happening, dude. I don't get it. What I'm gonna do is literally just test things until I figure out why it's not working. Either the function's broken, the logic's broken, or something's going on that I just don't understand. So what I'm going to do is run this function on grid 1.1 one, one after we populate it. So we populate it, then I'm going to run that function on grid 1.1. One, one. Now the stack the uh, stone control should populate stone control should populate um, wherever our mouse is when we put it on 1-1 one, one, it'll render stones control um, and control actually yeah stone control is the type of stone is that right? not the color so stone control should be the type of stone. Yeah, type of stone gets assigned into it. Okay, then we're asking if that type is a capstone or a standing stone and falsifying the legal move if it is. Which, it was working on that one time. I don't get why it's not consistent. It's working there. So let's try to place it. Let's run this function on <coughs> whenever we place a stone. If it's a move type place and we click, then we're going to say that grid, that occupant gets passed in as an argument and that is a table of a class instantiation of a occupant which has the field uh, has a table of members and a field of stone type in those tables and this modifies this parameter into its stone control getting updated with the stone type of the highest member in that grid. So, so placing a stone should now update the stone control, which it does not. Why would this? Why does that not work? Why does that not work? I think it has to do with I don't know what. I'm going to call this update stone control instead of get stone control because it's not really getting anything. It's just uh, updating the parameter that you pass in. So, anytime we say stone control, I'm just gonna say update stone control. It doesn't fix why this is busted. Now, what if we say we lock in row one we lock in row one, column two. Okay. Upon a placement. Let's see if it'll do that now. No, it doesn't. Row one, two is not updating control. So why is this busted? Because we can run grid one, one, and it comes true. We're not flushing stone control anywhere to my knowledge because if we're looking at stone control mentions 
we're not modifying it anywhere. The only way we modify stone control is here. Uh, as soon as the member's index starting from the highest index does not equal nil, then our stone control gets the stone type of that member that isn't nil. So why is that still busted? Does it mean it only works on a stack? Let's put one here, one here. Be in a move type move. We'll lock it in, we'll place it. We'll drop it, we'll lock it in. Still no stack control. Hmm. Or no stone control, rather. It's... what? What? Now all this function does is update the parameter. All it does is update the parameter stone control. So either we're not actually dropping any members in there, but we are because we can see them. I don't know what's happening, man. We gotta... What the... Uh, and, and, and we do break, so... We could swap this around. And say... 1, 10. Do that. Get rid of the break. And now, if it's not nil, it'll just overwrite with the highest stone control type. I don't think that's going to fix anything, though. Nope. Not even if we move stones. What the heck? Like, I'm curious if we just run this to do that oh you know what we got to do it after we populate because if you take a look hold on you take a look at our function here and it takes in the members stone type and it cycles through all the members of the stone type so it needs to have a member populated before we do that otherwise it, it'll just be false so that's what we need to do so upon placement, after we get our member assigned correctly, after we do that, very last, we need to update the control grid of the mouse grid that we clicked on when we clicked on it. Uh, so just here. So, we're going to modify the occupant and our mouse location upon placing a stone to update its stone control, and now we should finally have that working. Yes, 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 capstone, standing stone, lay stone. That's working now. So, <clears throat> so now we need to do this upon dropping stones. Actually, it would be once we're stones in hand locked, we need to modify the grid we just took it from. So let's see where our stones in hand locked gets true. So here, yeah, so like we're gonna, once we lock in how many stones are in our hand, then, oh look, we do it, get stack control. 
except it's actually updates. Oh no, we didn't do stack control. Wait, what the fuck is get stack control? Okay, we update the stack control of that old grid once we lock it in, and we need to do the same thing with stone control. It's like stack control is like, uh, okay, it's owned by black, but this is saying it's it's owned by a capstone. So we update upon stones and handlock being true, and we also once we place yeah once we place our stones in our first movement grid once we lock in yeah once we lock in that we need to also lock in our update stone control and our get stack control should also be update stack control which we can change but Let's see if, are there any other instances where we need to update our stone control? It's when places are dropped in a, a location and locked in. So I'm thinking this is going to work now. As it crashes. Stone control populating. Let's try moving. Um, this should actually, yeah, we, we gotta try moving with different stones. So let's try to move. Gosh, um, let me think this through. Let's just try to move. It's Black's turn. We're gonna... So the placement worked. So now we should... Once we lock this in, only have the one legal move. Okay. I think we might be good. Because if we drop this, our stone control is still a lay stone. Let's see if we can move a capstone onto a black here. So we're going to lock that in, we can move it any direction, and we can place it. Nice. Um, but if we were to try it again and move the capstone, we can't move it on a lay stone or a standing stone, but we can move it on a lay stone stack. Nice. So it looks like we fixed that bug of being able to move onto a capstone. And we fixed it by um, correctly updating the stone control, um, which wasn't working before. I don't know why it wasn't working where it was in our falsify legal move. Um, we had it right here and we Okay, this this would only update. Okay, I, I get why it's wrong now. Because this was only updating one occupant. Um, actually, it's going through each IJ, but we're not actually. I think this would work if we just switch this to IJ. But we don't have to run that every single frame. We, we really don't. What we did was even better, which is we just update it upon a change in stone type stone control so if we place a stone we update it we move a stone 
we commit stones to be dropped, we update it. Uh, if we place, yeah, if we commit stones to be dropped, we update it basically. So now that's working. Okay, well, let's see. Um, let's see our get diff here. We've got um, a bunch of notes that we used to write a new function. We change our debugging so it's easier to, to uh, modify the Y. We change some new fonts. We, um, we came up with an original stack order field for all members that we copy over our original stack order back and forth upon dropping and picking up stones so that we can inherit the original stack order if we pick up that stone that has been dropped into our mouse stones or picked up into our mouse stones. Um, and then we assign the stack order of the stone that's being dropped based on the occupants in that grid. Um, we, we now, um, we changed our get stone control occupant to called update stone control. And we wrote a function called player swap grid reset, which upon a player swap resets a bunch of init values for our grid occupants. That allows us to not, that allows us to have correct movement after committing one, one move because it flushes all those values so they can be used again. Um, yeah, here's all of that original stack order for picking up and dumping stones. Um, I'm curious if we need to update that stack order, that original stack order, if it's in the origin movement origin grid still. Um, we can take out some of these comments. And then if we if we hit enter and we have no more occupants, it changes our player, which we do with this player swap grid reset. Now, yep, then we just change some fonts. So what I'm going to do before we commit this bad boy, this was a good commit. Um, I don't want to do that. Before we commit this bad boy, we want to see the get stack control function to be modified to be called update stack control because it doesn't really get anything. It doesn't, this value doesn't, this, this function doesn't return any values, it just modifies the stack control. So we're calling get stack control update stack control now just like we have update stone control and it's just a little more clear. Okay, we got that saved. Now I'm curious. Uh, we, we can take our, we can take this out because we do fix that. We had those notes in so that we don't forget to update it, but we did update it so we can get rid of it. Now I'm curious if we can get rid of this line. If we need to copy our mouse stones original stack order back into our movement grid origin stack at members occupants plus one so so this is when we drop a stone I think we do need it I think we do need it I don't want to risk not copying that over so just do that okay um, 
you guys are our play state is 790 lines of code at the moment i mean you know we've got <laughs> maybe 50 lines of junk right there but for the most part that's all code look at how dense this is yeah jeez okay um so what's next We need to add a border so that we can visualize stones stacked on the same color. We need to make sure that scales with rendering too. Um, scales with the stack order. We need to... I think we already did this. Um, add a first move place to drop stones in the middle. We already did that. <laughs> okay. We we do this at least. Uh and we do this with move locked row. Um I might want to come visit these one day. This is, this, uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of this. Yeah, we do a lot of this already. If first movement locked, cycle through grid, update legal move. Yep, we do do that. Factor out, player stone color, stack control, out of click detection. I don't know what I was talking about there, but maybe we can do that. If we're looking for something to do. I would like to add this, but I'm going to get it working first, and then we can add some more functionality. Okay, so, wow, big update today, yeah. We updated the stack order of our mouse stones when we drop them in a grid that is different than what we picked them up as. So with this logic, we should be able to pick up stones from like we could pick up at one fat stone of a stack order of one move it on top of a stack order of um of nine and it should it should shrink let's test that real quick um if we turn on our 10 stack turn off our three stack then we can run test oh we want a nine stack not a ten stack so let's let's turn off we'll say this only has nine occupants and we don't populate the tenth so we've got a nine stack now in our grid one one and then um i'm gonna place a white so it could be black's turn and we're gonna move we're going to lock in that we only want to move one stone. We're going to lock in that we want to move to this stone. And then when we drop this, this black should shrink and fit on there, which it does. And if we take it out, it goes back to normal, which is a big update. And then we can lock it in and keep playing. That's sick. That's sick. We just didn't update stack control for that, I guess. Oh, it's white's move. Black's move. Okay, yeah, we do. So look, we can pick up five. Um, and then we can say we want to move here and see how they grow like that. There's that five that used to be on top there. And then if we wanted to move them back, we could. That's really cool. That's really cool. The adaptive rendering is super cool. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I want to 
change some of our debugging info to be a little more useful because right now I just kind of turn them on as I need them, but I can kind of toggle however many I want. I'm going to turn back on. Actually, I'm going to leave the I want to leave the nine stack tester on for now. Because it's fun to test that that whole stack with that adaptive rendering. So if we go to our debugging, let's see what we want to debug. Or what we want to. I would say we want to highlight what grid we're at. So grid at brackets. Um, and then we need to convert to a string the mouse Y grid for our for our row. You can concatenate that with a one of these plus a one of these. Concatenate that with a string of our mouse X grid. And then concatenate that with an ending string ending bracket um, and then we don't need this and we can put that at debug y Let's see if that's looking okay yep so now we're rendering the grid there um, I guess we would want to do legal move so let's make sure we do legal move. Legal move. Um, and we would want um, stack control. No stack. Actually, yeah. Stack control. And um, we would also want stone control. And then maybe milestone occupants or something. So let us put in the appropriate values. Legal move concatenate that with the grid at the mouse location. It's legal move status, that occupant. That's that debug plus the Y offset. Then we got stack control, which is just like this, except stack control. And then our stone control, just like this, <laughs> but stone control. That'll give us the stone type of the highest one in that stack. And then mouse stone occupants, which is just going to be mouse stones dot occupants. I don't think that'll crash on a move type place. Okay, so yeah. So if we're, one thing I want to switch is that if, if we are, uh, these should all be legal moves, except for this should be not a legal move. So if it's place, we, we should update, It's a move type move. I don't think I want to do this right now. I think um, I think I'm going to commit what we got, and then I'll leave this to do again. Because um, we're going to have to change the way the rendering works for our uh, placement highlights when we do this. But I do want to do this. Um, So 
So we need to update our legal moves for move type place and then only render the highlight if it's if it's um over that. Because right now if we take a look at our selection highlight. Move type place. How do we do that? Selection highlight. Here. So move type move. I guess I don't know how we're doing modifies selection highlight that is under house location, but it's only doing it on empty spaces, which is correct, but I'm not seeing where I say that. Maybe it's under our actual occupant selection highlight. Nope, selection highlight. I don't actually get how that's working appropriately. It's a move type move. I don't know. I might not want to mess with that, but it's wrong. I mean, it, it's it's not functioning wrong. Um, I just don't get how it's functioning right looking at the code at the moment. But we'll we'll tackle that another time. But um, thanks for watching. If you want to try the game, you can. Uh, uh, you know, there's YouTube videos about how to play and, and whatnot. And there is this this app that they're playing, that 3D one. I'm making a 2D one, which is a little different. But they have a 6x6, I'm only doing 5x5. It would be not too hard to update mine to be a 6x6, but I'm not really interested in doing that because the stacks can't go higher than 10, so I think a 5 board is fine. Yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow and we'll do, we'll do, um, maybe we'll fix that legal move in occupants. Maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll get to doing our third movement, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's, we're coming up on the finish line. I mean, it's like, we got a ton of functionality as of right now. Um, as long as you don't need to move more than one space over, we've got basically the all the legal moves you can do in the game. So once we expand that to the second move, third move, fourth move, which is an extension of the logic we already came up with and we know it's working, then we've got all our legal moves locked in. Then we just have to worry about win state and scoring and the very first move that you play. Um, but yeah, it's coming along and then we'll be done with tech and then move back on to joust and finish that.